Welcome back to the blog guys. Today we're gonna be installing a bed frame for the camper van. And this is something that I gave a lot of thought. We're gonna be building the bed frame directly across the back of the van here. And then we're gonna be building kind of little storage shelves on one side. And we're also gonna have our table slide out from underneath. So it took quite a bit of measuring, lining things up, but I think I got it figured out so. Let's begin. Right here I have inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum angle, which is an eighth of an inch thick. So it's pretty sturdy stuff. You could also go with steel. Um, that's stronger. I just thought aluminum being a little more lightweight. Uh, it's very durable, even though it can bend a little easier than steel. I think it'll hold up uh, really solid. And then I'm going to mount those across here, just like so. I didn't want to build it out of wood. Most people build theirs out of wood. It's really bulky. Um, it's not quite as sturdy, I guess. And it takes up a lot more space. So this will be very compact design and very sturdy. I've already measured and cut the aluminum to 80 inches. So that's the length of the bed, obviously. And then I've gone along and measured where I'm putting my bolts. I've measured out five bolt holes. Uh, I think that'll be plenty to make it uh, solid and secure it. I am drilling first off a pilot hole and then I'm gonna be drilling the main size hole for an eight millimeter bolt. And that's actually gonna go into a rib nut. So I'm gonna use a rib gun to set those bolts in place, which I actually was able to purchase off Amazon for about 80 bucks, I think. So pretty inexpensive, definitely worthwhile. It'll really secure that angle to the side of the band frame. I've marked and drilled out a couple of the holes along the side. How I did that was I just placed this up there, marked them out with a permanent marker, and then drilled them out. Now that I've drilled, these holes out, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the edges with some spray paint, um, just some metal primer. These are the rib nuts that I'm gonna be using. And this is the tool that I ordered on Amazon. It seems to be a pretty solid tool. Never used it before, so we'll see how it goes. Wanna hear a funny story? Broke the rib nut tool. So the other night, when I was super pumped about getting this tool on Amazon, I was putting the rib nuts on the other side here and snapped the tool, which I'm pretty sure I have footage of. Should be funny. Into the hole. What the fuck? But sent it back to Amazon, got the new one, and I wanted to show you guys exactly how to use it and some tips on how not to break it, I guess. So you have your little rib nut right there, which I also got on Amazon. These are M8s, but you can get a whole bunch of different sizes um, and you can just change out this piece. The rib nut tool comes with a whole bunch of different sizes as well. So all you do is you thread your rib nut on there with the arms wide open. And then you place the nut into the hole and slowly and gently squeeze together. And then, boom, it's in place just like that. Open the arms back up and just unthread the tool from the nut and it is in place. The trick is to do it slow and steady and not too hard, because if you go too fast and too hard, I think it'll snap. That's what happened last time, so. Be careful. All ready to um, mount this piece on this side here. All I'm using is an eight mil, I think by one and a quarter inch bolt with a washer. And then I'm just gonna use um, some medium Loctite uh, just so we don't have to worry about these bolts ever coming out. Got the one side mounted, it went up really well. Seems to be super solid. Now it's time for the other side. So now that I have uh, both pieces of aluminum on either side uh, fastened to the wall there, I have gone ahead and cut a piece of iron. So I used aluminum on the sides and now I'm using 
Just, it's like cold rolled steel. It's an inch and a half by inch and a half, and it's about an eighth of an inch thick. So I've gone ahead and cut a piece across here, and then I'm just gonna bolt it on either side. But I'm gonna put five of them along, and then I'm gonna also do some sort of brace down the middle. I think it'll hold up pretty nice. So to uh, hold the angle iron in place, just using a 5 16th by one inch, I think, bolt and then a washer, and then just a lock nut underneath to hold it in place and so it never comes loose. I'll put supports along the back here, but I really wanted to have like underneath the bed completely open. I didn't want any braces like in the middle. And I also wanted um, the bed frame to be really strong and solid. So hopefully it works out. I decided to put a couple beams in the middle here, just shorter pieces, cause I had some left over. So if you want to build a bed like this, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is not the cheapest option. If you want to use 2x4s, that's totally fine. Um, that's what I mostly saw online, but it looked really bulky, took up a lot of space. I wanted something stronger and more compact. Last night it was starting to get a little dark, so ran to the hardware store, picked up some 3 quarter inch pieces of plywood. I needed two pieces and I cut them to cover the frame worked out pretty well. I also drilled some holes. I can show you guys right there. Um, that's so the plywood fits flush with the bar and those holes are just for these bolts here. So that worked pretty well. I'm going to go ahead. I wiped all the metal down, cleaned it off and I'm actually gonna paint it white uh, just to avoid rust. And I think I'm actually gonna paint the plywood as well, paint it white because our walls are all gonna be white. So everything should match as Kaylee tells me. Next up, we're gonna be installing the drawers underneath the bed. How I did that was I cut a sheet of plywood um, to cover the end of the bed and then we decided to go with Ikea cabinets. So we bought the Ikea cabinets, which made things so much easier and all I did was cut a square in the plywood and then we slightly modified the cabinet by cutting the top off. What do you think? Slid in perfectly. So now I'm just gonna build a little frame to go underneath of it. I'm building it out of two by fours. The cabinets that we got, the legs are about three and a half inches high off the ground. So two by fours will work perfectly and they'll be a lot more solid than the plastic legs Ikea gives you. All right, so it is time to continue work on this bed frame. We got the sliders in just today, so very exciting. What we decided to go with is some heavy duty locking sliders on Amazon. They have a little blue tab here that locks it, both when it slid all the way in and when the table slid all the way out. So that'll hopefully help keep it sturdy. These are heavy duty sliders, so they're made for industrial applications. I'm really hoping that these are strong enough. There were some heavy duty ones and then some ultra heavy duty ones. The difference being these ones are two inches thick and the ultra ones are three inches thick. So I wanted to keep a low profile, being able to slide the table in and out just above the cabinets here. Our countertop, it's one of the slab countertops. You can use anything, but we decided to go with this to match the countertop. It's gonna slide out three feet. So figure that'll be enough room to work, eat, do whatever. Let's get to it. I've already finished one side here and I'll show you how it works. So I have the slider mounted on the side of our kitchen table. I also have a two by two mounted underneath that the slider is mounted to and then the two by two is mounted to the table. This slab is about an inch thick and then these sliders about two inches thick right here. And then obviously this is one and a half inch since it's a two by two. So I think that'll be definitely sturdy enough. I'm just working on this one. So what I've done here is I've cut this two by two to length and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount the slider to the two by two and then mount that both pieces to the tabletop. What I'm doing here, mounting it, I want this to be flush. I didn't want these tabs to stick out. I just wanted to be able to grab underneath and then unlock it and slide it out. The next thing is making these two things flush. So there's a nice flat surface there, nothing get caught. These sliders actually seem super smooth. They're about 135 bucks on Amazon. Not a bad deal. Um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to have to Look under here, I'm gonna have to cut out the square. So I'm just measuring this out and I'm laughing at myself because 
Earlier I measured how high my knee was because when I'm sitting on this bench, I don't want my knees to be hitting the table. And I actually measured top of knee right here, but that's what that T-O-N stands for. But I'm an idiot and forgot knee started with K, so. Late nights working on the van, I tell you what. Sometimes I'm not all there anymore. Gonna go ahead and cut this out. I'm just gonna use a circular saw and a uh, Makita jigsaw. Holes cut. Maybe slide this puppy in there. I just kind of skipped ahead on you guys a little bit. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything. I actually put the table in. It's just like loosely hanging in there though. It's just, I just wanted to make sure it fit. But, so I got two by fours and I cut them to length and I ran them along the side here screwed it in to the plywood on each side. And then I also, you can see on the end there, that I put a two by four on an angle. That's what I've done so far, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out and try to level off this table and see if it'll actually slide back and forth. So glad this table installed. It was hard. <laughs> um, the sliders don't come with any directions, so they're really difficult to um, kind of measure out and mount. The tolerances are pretty tight. Like look at how like tight those are. That line is like super close on both sides. My biggest piece of advice is making sure it's square. Make sure everything is square because if it's not, it's gonna rub or the sliders are gonna come off or get really tough and you're gonna push them and break them or something. I'm gonna make little uh, finger notches right here on either side just so you can uh, like lift up these. What all you do is lift up on both sides like these both triggers here. And then just slide all the way out like that. And it actually locks. And I even have enough knee clearance. No, this is like really nice. You can put a laptop, Big glass of beer, cool, oh, he'd be fine, laughing. Really happy with it. And then all you do is just, just like that, it's like locked in there. Next up, I'm gonna be cutting the panel that is gonna be covering this plywood. You can see behind me that me and Kaylee have used um, this panel board. It comes in four by eight sheets. It worked really well for covering the walls and the roof up. Uh, a lot easier than doing individual like one by sixes that we've seen a lot of other camper vans. So hopefully this holds up pretty well. Um, it's solid stuff. Anyways, that's what I've cut out here. And I'm just gonna put it up and then trace out these squares uh, from the backside to make sure I have the proper cutouts. Drawers are in, table's in. It's all sliding nice. But time for what's coming next, which is putting the plywood on for the bed. One thing I wanted to add is I picked up, this is just weather stripping that you would put on windows. It's just kind of like made of a rubber. I'm just gonna stick it down to the edges and on some gaps in the middle, just so there's no noise when you're jumping on and off the bed or there's no squeaking. Got the plywood on here. This is three quarter inch, uh, just regular spruce plywood that I painted white. Works great, really solid. Definitely happy that I put those um, little pieces of weather stripping around because it's definitely like a whole lot quieter, like just moving on it right now. It's, um, we tested it out before and it was kind of creaking and rubbing and stuff. So it's definitely really, really strong. Next up, what we're gonna be doing is building some storage cabinets along the side here. They only come out about eight inches because we have a queen size bed. 80 by 60 inches so we only had a little bit of space left over but we're gonna do the uh, whole length of the bed frame along this one side which should actually help out for storage for clothes and whatever else we want to put in there so that'll be really nice because storage is hard to come by in these camper vans you um, spend a lot of time working for a small amount of storage that's for sure I cut out half inch plywood use for this outside and then the inside dividers and then on each end and then I have a one by four that goes the whole length of the back which is what the hinges are attached to and then I'm just gonna go ahead and screw this directly into uh, the side of the van I got these hinges on Amazon and they're soft closing and they work pretty good I also for the tops since you're gonna be seeing this wood, 
I went with three quarter inch birch. So we're gonna go ahead and paint this whole thing white, but uh, the top pieces will obviously uh, look a lot better and they'll be the ones that are exposed a lot more. I'm gonna go ahead and screw down this plywood sheeting. What I'm gonna use is just, I think they're about an inch sheet metal screws. I'm just gonna drill through the metal beams that go across and screw the plywood into them. Got this secured down. Um, I put about four screws in per rail, just going through the middle. It's nice and solid now. And I'm gonna throw this drill bit in now and drill some holes. Kaylee's almost done painting and I think the paint's almost dry. So we're gonna be able to throw that guy um, along here and then we'll be able to bring the mattress out and almost ready to sleep in, which is pretty exciting. One thing about the mattress is we did go with an eight inch mattress. It was only about 250 bucks on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, I'm not gonna lie, but the reviews were good and we're gonna see how comfy it is, I guess. So those are my mattress air vents. Nothing special. I don't even know if they'll work, but uh, supposedly that's why you have slats across the bed and not just a sheet of plywood to allow air ventilation to come up into your mattress. Who knew? I sure didn't. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to our mattress. It's a spring mattress with a pillow top. So I'm sure air will be able to circulate through there. I don't know. These 12 holes should help. We'll see. We got the mattress in, we got the covers on, and we are so excited. Yeah, everything's all finished and it looks really good. Um, there's a few small things that we still need to do, but other than that, it is complete. And we're so happy with how the table slides out. The drawers underneath add a lot of space. And then the little cubbies like along the edge also add a ton of storage for yeah. clothes or whatever. And I'm super excited about our little bookshelf that we decided to make right here. Mm -hmm. We also um, made little kind of cutouts beside the bed on each side and they have a little shelf for your phone and a little USB charger, which is just going to be super heavy as well. Yes. There is so much space under this bed as well. We've got a huge garage in the back, which is something that we really, really mm -hmm. wanted to have. We're going to have water, solar, propane. There's going to be a lot of stuff underneath there and we still wanted room for skis, skis or yeah. bikes possibly or any other gear that we wanted to bring along with us. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one and it was really in depth, but we are so happy with mm -hmm. how the bed turned out. <laughs> yeah. And there were a lot of little things that we wanted to make sure um, we got footage of. So you guys know exactly what ha like how to do it or if you wanted to try it yourself. <laughs> if you like this video, make sure to give us a like and hit that subscribe button for more van stuff. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.